hardly ever heard, if at all known. These were two of the fantasies for piano four hands, entitled Souvenir de la Russie. The first one is entitled the Der Zweig, which means the branch, and the second one, uh, in the dawn of the morning, do not wake her. That's a romance. <laughs> These are two fantasies, and they were written by Brahms under the pseudonym of uh, uh, J.W. G.W. Marx. So, we have had all kinds of examples of actual fantasies, so-called by their respective composers. This is the Classical Choice, 94.1 KFSDFM, San Diego. Ever wish you hadn't? Sure have, I know I have. That's the title of tonight's Adventures in Good Music. We'll see what Carl Haas means by that. Ever wish you hadn't? done something that you wish you hadn't, whether perhaps by way of mouth or perhaps a written note or just some action that you wish had never taken place. Well, would you believe that some of our most popular music today would come in that category, so popular that the respective composers wish they hadn't written it? I thought we would have some fun together today, looking at some of that music in a program entitled Ever Wish You Hadn't. It'll be a revelation. Ever Wish You Hadn't. Rachmaninoff was 19 years old when in 1892 he wrote his most famous piece and also a piano piece which brought him very early recognition at that time. He himself first performed it in 1892 in Moscow, having written it just a few months before. Yes, you guessed it, it's the prelude in C-sharp minor. Now everybody loves it, and Rachmaninoff thought highly of it as well. But throughout his life, wherever he went, people would say, won't you play your prelude, meaning the C-sharp minor one, even though he had written many others afterwards. So Rachmaninoff himself is responsible for the, for the knowledge today that he came to a point where he wished he hadn't written it because it haunted him wherever he went. I have a rare recording here of Sergei Rachmaninoff performing his own C-sharp minor prelude of which he grew tired because of the constant demand. This is the way he played it. Thank you. 
Now you see, now I'm tempted to bring you other versions of the same piece to compare. This was Rahmaninoff himself, a reissued recording, very early one, of his own C-sharp minor prelude. You hear uh, many things that are not generally heard in this piece, a very dramatic performance, and music students would do well to study this very carefully, because this is what Rahmaninoff had in mind the kaleidoscoping almost of a sound in the middle portion, and the little innuendos and the little nuances of tempo here and there. This is a marvelous way of studying a composition by the composer's own performance. And then, of course, you add your own thoughts, provided that you have some worthwhile ones. So this is the piece, then, which, of which Rachmaninoff grew tired, simply because ever since he wrote it at the age of 19, he was obliged to play it wherever he went, at least as an encore. People wouldn't leave until he played it. So, no wonder he wished he had never written it. As a matter of fact, the legend refuses to die that Joseph Hoffman, the great Polish pianist, once after a recital in Carnegie Hall, had a visit from Rachmaninoff, the two were friends, backstage, while the audience still clamored for an encore. And Joseph Hoffman said to Rahmaninoff, You know what I'm going to play for an encore? Rahmaninoff said, Don't you dare! Well, <laughs> Hoffman went back to the stage and played the three chords which opened the prelude you just heard, only to then go into the famous fantasy impromptu of Chopin, which has only two of the opening octaves. So he fooled Rahmaninoff from the stage with Rahmaninoff sitting backstage, probably, <laughs> biting his nails, here we go again. It's a rather unusual and lovely anecdote, which I have no reason to doubt. Einstein conducting in Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. Mm -hmm. 